Hi, my name is Art Bergeron, uh, and I'm an elder law attorney. Welcome to what I hope will be the first of a series of shows, uh, which I'm calling Bergeron Briefs. Uh, these are shows that I've done in other communities uh, to deal with kind of the background to what I do, which is elder law. Uh, I'm an elder law attorney. I work at a firm called Myrick O'Connell. But really what elder law is about, I have found, is somewhat about the law and knowing how to qualify for some programs and things. But it's really also about knowing about a variety of the things uh, uh, and the options that you have as an elder. Uh, I met Chuck Gifford. Uh, when I was doing one of those presentations at the Salt Marsh, and I invited him in because being at Sherbin Commons, he was mm -hmm. the he was giving the 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 perspective of when living in a in an assisted living is really kind of an appropriate option. I always I always talk to my clients and tell them, you know, every t my typical client always wants to die and be buried in the backyard. They want to live forever in their houses, and I always tell them, I say that's a great idea, as long as you can be safe there. Um, but there may be a point where, in terms of safety, in terms of being social and connecting with other people, it makes sense to be in assisted living. That's how I met Chuck. Hi. So Chuck, tell me about you. Um, you, are, you are running Sherburn Commons, and mm -hmm. you have been here for a long time? Well, I've been on island for, you know, part of every year of my life. So yes, that's I've a, been around a for a really, while. That's a really yeah. long time. Yeah, it's getting right. longer every year, too, longer. I might add. Um, <laughs> But I've been in Sherburne for uh, almost four years. Almost four. And almost before four years. that, had you been on? A, when did you kind of come back to the island? You're one of those people that, that went away, mm -hmm. or or kind of were, were you here permanently many years ago? Well, I. How did that all? Uh, I, I started out as a summer kid. Yeah. And uh, as was my father before me, and my grandfather before him, um, and. So I, uh, I came and I lived here year-round in the 1970s. I took a year off from college. I lived mm -hmm. here in 72 and worked at the shipyard and worked in the theater and had a wonderful time. 1972, that must have been a lot of fun. It yeah. was, uh, yes. yes. <laughs> it was a lot, a of, lot fun. of fun. What I can remember of it, yes. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like the 60s. If you yeah. can remember it, yeah. you weren't here. You but, weren't. Yeah. Um, and then came back in uh, the end of 74 in that year, mm -hmm. uh, lived here for another um, three years, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, at that point. I met my now wife in that time period. She was here? She was here. And um, we, uh, we got married, uh, moved off, and uh, changed careers, did a lot of different things, moved around the country, literally went from uh, here to the Detroit area, to yeah. Central Ohio, to California, back to Northwestern Ohio, back to Northwestern Connecticut, and then finally back here about 10 Trying years ago. Trying to find ago. your way back to Nantucket, yeah. just a kind of a circuitous... Finding our way route. back home, right. exactly. By the way, was your wife from the island, or was she also... No, a... she's from Connecticut. I see. Yeah, so she came down, she came down for a weekend and came back the following week and... And that was all that good. That was all taken. That yep. was all good. Yep. So now you've been back here full time for about ten years. About ten years, yeah. And and why'd you come back? Well, when I first came, we were always going to come back. It was yep. just a question of for what and for when. Uh, we first came back uh, again. We were living in. I was working at a boys' boarding school up in Litchfield County in Connecticut. Yep. yep. And um, I had the opportunity to uh, go to work at the hospital and w worked with them as the director of the. Uh, community relations and what was then called development mm -hmm. and that then became the foundation and marketing and community relations and I worked there for about six years. I see. And then left to go and be the executive director of Sherburn Commons. Of Sherburn Commons, mm -hmm. which has had a kind of an exciting ride <laughs> yeah. over the last few years. That's one, of the, one of the things that I've learned since uh -huh. I've been here. Uh, yes, yeah, that's true. Every, everyone has a few stories about Sherburn Commons. That's true. Um, you so, know it, so you want to talk a little bit about the, the history sure. and then kind of where things are, where mm -hmm. things are going. I, mm -hmm. it, I know one of the things, whenever I come back onto the island, I'm always trying to get briefings from people on right. kind of where things are. So. Absolutely. Sherbin, Sherbin Commons. We, uh, the doors opened in, in 07 um, as a not-for-profit. Mm -hmm. uh, it made it to about oh, into 08 and unfortunately went bankrupt at that point for all kinds of different reasons, not the least of which is the economy went really very south. Yeah, 08 wasn't very south. No, yeah. no. And it was a new idea. The whole idea of having a retirement community on Nantucket where 
both independent and assisted living were offered uh, mm -hmm. was a new concept. And the whole understanding of what assisted living meant was a very new concept. because For, for here. For here, for Nantucket. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because the only other option on Nantucket was the island home, which you know is a skilled nursing facility. We'll call it very assisted living. Uh, yeah, very, 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 very assisted. Very, very assisted. Nursing assisted yes. living, exactly. Yes. So there was a, an educational process that needed to take place. Um, unfortunately, uh, it did go, they went bankrupt. And after two years, there was a for-profit entity that came in and uh, they had to go to town meeting to get... By the way, did it stay in operation during those two years? It stayed in operation. I see. It did stay in operation. Um, and then... And there, then the there weren't a lot of new people coming in during those two years, but it did stay in operation and it's, it did stay open. Um, because the town of Nantucket owns the land that Sherburne Commons is built on, and that was sort of, the again, the original idea because it was a not-for-profit uh, so that they could, they could do that. Uh, because again, you know, as you know, land is incredibly expensive here. I have I have learned. You've that. learned that, I'm sure. Um, so, in the town meeting in 2010, the agreement was that they would allow a, a for-profit entity to come in and mm -hmm. run Sherburn. They did. They came in. Unfortunately, um, the organization, the company called Servant. Mm -hmm. um, uh, didn't survive, and their, the, the people who were holding their note, their loan, was a real estate investment trust out of yep. California called Cornerstone. Yeah. And uh, so when Summit, I mean, when, uh, excuse me, when uh, Servant disappeared, then Cornerstone became the, the owner of the assets. I see. They had also um, hired a third party, a, a company out of Florida called uh, Riverwood Management, to come in and be the management team. Uh, who ran it. So all of us who worked for Sherwin Commons actually worked for Riverwood. I see. Um, in the time that, again, that was in April of 2010, I came to work in the very end of December of 2010. And so mm -hmm. in that um, interim since then, we have increased the occupancy. We have, we have done better, but we have not truly become a you know, complete break-even organization. I say, and when you and say it, you've increased the occupancy, when you started, about how many people were there, and then, and about how many people are there? Well, I think that I mean, if I did it in percentages, I think yeah. we were at about thirty, roughly thirty some odd percent, and we're up to about seventy-five to close From to eighty. Thirty to seventy. That, yeah. yeah, that's a pretty substantial change. Yeah, and so I mean, it's been good. It's been it's been slow. It's been progressive, yeah. but what we've been getting there. Uh, and of course, the beginning part, we had to you know we had to really get over the the mental. Um, concern about whether or not Sherburne Commons, you know, we're just coming out of bankruptcy, so, you right. know, that whole, are they going to live, are they going to survive? Right. Um, right. In the process, I mean, again, Real Estate Investment Trust is there to make money for its investors, and that's what they do. Um, they did a great job of helping us stay uh, viable and staying open, um, but they were losing money in the process, so they, right. they were interested in finding another way to, um, to to go about it. So they they were looking for somebody else to come in. Mm -hmm. We had a group from the North Shore of Boston, North Shore of Massachusetts come in and, and look at us and um, they went back and forth to negotiate with the town because they wanted to make big changes to the land lease and be able to sell cottages and that sort of thing. Um, and that didn't work out. That They were negotiating back and forth for a better part of two years, but it didn't work out. But in the process, one of the people, the person who was really negotiating on behalf of the town mm -hmm. with this company from the North Shore, got to learn an awful lot about the business and got to learn an awful lot about what we were about at Sherwin Commons and felt that indeed we could make this a viable, viable entity. So, and can you can you say his name? His name is David Worth. David Worth, and he's done a fantastic job of of working not only with us but also working with the town and and coming up with. You know, we've come up with some with plans to really break even, and conceivably we could do better than that in the not too distant future. I just think that's a great story that you have somebody that really kind of got involved, mm -hmm. almost as a volunteer to yeah. help the town out in terms of dealing with this third party, and then was and then really kind of started to saying, well, geez, maybe this really ought to be more homegrown, which is a great. Well, you know, the, piece. there was a, there was a strong um, push to you know. I think it was actually. Uh, the, the newspaper in an editorial made a comment that said, you know, 
Nantucket's always done a great job of taking care of its own. And we always, you know, we understand ourselves. We understand the island. It is different here. We understand how it works. And we've always done a much better job of taking care of ourselves and other people from off. And yep. maybe we ought to find a way to do that. And um, David um, Rose, you know, saw that, agreed with that, and along uh, with some others in town, and started investigating how we could do it. So what the idea is that we will start as a, we will uh, be coming back again as a non nonprofit mm -hmm. um, entity, and it will be a board bet made up of Nantucket people. So either people who live here year round, or people who have a major commitment to the island, yeah. who who are here a great deal of the year. Uh, maybe not, you know, full time, but but pretty close to it, and a small group, not a big. So you don't have to be in Feb here in February in order to be on the, the <laughs> no, board. Right? No, you, right. Right. <laughs> let's see if they have <laughs> a board meeting in February or not. <laughs> there, there is a limit. I mean, there, there is. A limit. So, uh, so, so that's great, and, and there's really been a kind of a recruitment effort to find, you know, mm -hmm. look for local folks. And yeah, stuff. yeah. And and at this point, as far as as far as the deal between you know you you folks are the non are the the proposed nonprofit and the for profit uh, is that part of the deal that part uh, of the deal is sealed actually that's great. that they've they've both you know there's a purchase and sale agreement that's been yeah. signed yeah. Uh, they went back and forth negotiated we were hoping that you know the end of september then the end of october hopefully now the end of november yeah. but we're you know they have signed it every month they come back, back yeah. right exactly How are things a little bit on? longer right. um, Lawyers, you know about how that Lawyers works. Lawyers are, yeah. I, that's why I haven't complained. I said, ah, oh, <laughs> must be some more legal technicalities uh -huh. to be ironed out. Yeah, right? exactly. So yeah, you I, understand I, better I, than I anybody can, exactly can understand what's going on. That, this that's thing. right. So, um, yeah, so now it's in the hands really of the of town council. They're looking at it. And uh, it, it, the way it was, um, the way it went to town meeting the last time. Mm -hmm. In 2010, it does not have to go back to town meeting, and so because you're keeping all of those pieces of the deal, right. so there's nothing huge that's being modified. Nope. And so it'll be um, everything that's been agreed to. It's within that you know that box, that parameter, and uh, hopefully by the end of the month we'll be we'll have it all finished up. So. That's great. Now, yeah. it, now if if this goes forward, how do you, first of all, are you hoping to stay? Are you going to stay for a while? You I'm know, hoping to stay. You're not know, yeah. one of those old guys that's going to be retiring and. No, but then I, where are you going to go? I you can't. can't go off out, right? Well, I right. can't afford to retire. Like, like, so. <laughs> <laughs> so it, like many. So, so, so tell me about how you would imagine Sherbin Commons being the same or changing. How would how, how do you see it? And how from the from the from in conversations with Mr. Worth and others, what is your sense of this? Well, it's a very you know I think <clears throat> it's a very important part of the community. We offer an opportunity for you know retirement living is really sort of. I don't know if it's fair to say carefree living, but certainly worry-free living. You know, we provide right. utilities, we provide maintenance, we provide, you know, landscaping and taking your trash and a meal a day and all these wonderful things. This is what I always tell my clients. I say, now, you know, I know that you love your house, but do you really feel like cooking every yeah. day? Well, do you just love making that bed? Uh -huh. You know, is that just a real favor to yours? You yeah. know, there, there's a point at which that can get really old. So. Yeah, exactly. And so that that's one of the things that we offer. And then on the assisted living side, we're, you know, we're there for people who do need a little more assistance with daily living. You know, it may be that they need help in the shower, they may need help getting dressed, it may be that they help need help remembering when to take certain medications and those mm -hmm. kinds of things. And we can provide that. We can provide that assistance. It's not the same as as the island home. I mean, the island home is truly a, a, a nursing home. It, it's a skilled nursing facility. Right. If you need to have, you know, nursing kind of help and nursing kind of attention, that's the, the best place for you. But if you don't need quite that, mm -hmm. we, we have the opportunity to provide that for people. So it's a very important part of the community as a whole that wasn't yep. here before, that is here now. And I think, you know, people are starting to understand better what it is that we, we offer and mm -hmm. better, uh, get a better understanding of, 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 of how we can do that for, for people. So. And, and do you anticipate your kind of typical resident changing? Oh, you know, with, with, under this under this new in, in the way that you're thinking about this the 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 operation going forward, and so who, and who who would you say is your is there not a typical person? But give give me a range of like who is there, who is there? Our 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 residents basically break into three three broad categories. Mm -hmm. You have people who have lived here on the island, natives, if you will, who you know born and lived here all their lives. You have people who have lived here. Um, 
for portions of their lives. Maybe they were summer people and right. decided to retire here. And then we have people who are here because their children live on island. And, and frankly, I mean, as we all know who live here, and you are getting to know as you come here more and more often, you know, it's living on an island is not for everybody. Living on an island is, um, if, you, if you haven't done it and you don't know what it's all about, can be kind of daunting. Because you're a boat away from pretty much. Or a boat or a plane away A boat away or a very frightening <laughs> plane ride away from It's everything. only 15 minutes. Oh, oh. Know, 15 <laughs> minutes of magic every time. Uh, yeah, so there's that. Right. Uh, although, you know, I was just speaking to someone because I was, as, as it happens, I have a, a very good friend who, um, um, and, and former client who uh, was a builder, and he and his wife have retired here, mm -hmm. and they've been talking, and he's been talking to his mother about that. Their you know, mother still lives at home, and it's funny talking to him because that is not unlike my typical client. When, when I first learned about assisted living myself, now this was in the early 90s, and I was doing the permitting work, the lawyer permitting work mm -hmm. in a particular community uh, back home in Marlboro, and I had assumed, and I was presenting this to the city council, that most of the residents of the assisted living would be Marlboro people. It's very close. But now when I look at it, and I know a lot of the folks in that population, there's certainly that slice. But there's a big slice of people who simply, they want to be close to their kids, but they don't want to be really close to their kids. Right. Right? You just assume, you know, you don't want to be waking living, up and yeah, seeing them in, the every morning. Right. Yeah. You know? So they have that independence. But at the same time, they, 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 know, they feel safe. You know, if there's an issue, well, their, kid can, their child can come over. Mm -hmm. um, I know one of the issues, you know, that, that always from my clients is, is the issues, of, or issues surrounding medical care. But you know, what's nice, I know that, the, uh, that here on Nantucket also, there's this whole drive. They're really looking at, 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 at modernizing or expanding the hospital. There's a wonderful history of a community hospital that's been very strong. You get ties right. to partners and stuff. Right. So there's a lot of reasons why people, it would really work here. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, no, it, it, and it's been, again, it's been successful from that standpoint in that we've had, you know, we get people in those three groups who come, mm -hmm. who come and, and, and are comfortable there. So that's, I mean, that's a good thing. And that's, I think, the other reason that it's nice to have a board and people who are, you know, owning, running the place, if you will, again, nonprofit, but who are running the place, who understand the island and want to be here and want to see the island community be able to offer these, these kinds of things to, to, the people, to the people who live here as they age, you know? Which is really... Which, which is what which, it's you know, all about, you know? Your own, you know, your own family, the families yeah. of the folks who are here. So I know one of the things we talked about beforehand was if this really closes, <laughs> or when this really, when this when this really this closes, closes. Yeah. Uh, we had talked about your coming back and having Mr. Worth actually come back. Yeah, we'd love to do that. And to talk a little bit yeah. about his vision mm -hmm. and, the, and, and about who, who would be the, kind of the, the new players on the island, which I think would also make a lot of local folks feel more comfortable knowing Absolutely. that the management, if you really don't like them, well, you know where they live. Well, you know? yeah. You can go, exactly. you can go <laughs> find these people. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, I might be sitting next to you at the Dreamland. <laughs> <all you know. laughs> yeah. So thank you very, very much My for pleasure. coming on. Um, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for watching this, uh, what I hope is the initial installment of uh, Bergeron Briefs. And uh, we'll be back again soon. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chuck. All right. Thank you.